this is how companies are going to go in the future. This is the way some companies are going to be created. They're not going to have to go through the process of let's come up with a business plan and let's go form an entity and have a business model and go raise money and go try to sell a product or a service and find product market fit. They can, they can get product market fit through actual use cases, through actually using it, through releasing the code and seeing how people using and iterate through that, it doesn't cost them a whole lot to do it. And then they can reward all the people that help them along the way later. Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. We're going to talk today about companies of the future. What are companies going to look like when we start incorporating things like digital assets, DeFi, DAOs, NFTs, and all that. What is a little bit about what all that might look like based on what we're seeing now uh, in the, the crypto and DeFi realm. First, we want to remind you to subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube um, and check, out our, check us out on Twitter at Interaxis8. So back to this, companies of the future. To do this, we're going to probably talk about a few of the uh, protocols or companies or projects, whatever we want to call them. We don't really have a very good word for them in the DeFi or crypto space right now and see how this might impact what companies or, or projects look like in the future. So what we have now, what we know of companies is if Adam and Ron want to form a company, very hypothetically, Adam and Ron have, ever, have actually form several companies. What we do is we go fill out some sort of like maybe LLC paperwork, right? So we have some type of uh, official um, structure, right, which we file with some sort of state or, or federal entity that says here's what our structure is going to look like. And of that, here are the, we're going to lay out, here are the owners, here are the, or the members if it's an LLC. Here's the, the board. Here's the executive team. Here's what we're going to do for profit, all those things. We might go get investors, and we have to tell the investors, this is everything we're doing. Here's how we're going to distribute profits to you, at what intervals, and how much, and how we're going to get it to you. And there are certain regulations around that, Reg D and Reg A, how much you can, uh, how much you can raise, and from what types of investors. All those regulations are there right now. So what we're seeing, and, and it's, you know, we start a company with a specific purpose around we have a business idea, we go try to either try to raise money or we try to bootstrap it, put our own money in somehow and to build some sort of product or service, go out and try to get clients and get them to pay us, you know, usually in some sort of fiat currency, right? Get them to pay us dollars for something that we're offering, either a product or a service. That's how companies work now. What we're seeing in the crypto and DeFi world is a totally different idea of what an entity or a project or a company or a protocol is. And so what we're seeing more of now uh, is something like you, you have a distributed team. So you might have a team, you might have programmers, coders that somehow find each other. And they could find each other on something like Discord or, or Telegram or through Twitter or something, and they might not even know each other. They might be totally anonymous, but they can, they, they've interacted somehow. They can look at each other's code. They can use GitHub and actually see each other's code and, and see what they've done. They can, if it's a DeFi related thing, they can actually see each other's wallets. So you can share like, look, here's what I've invested in so, you, so I can prove to you that I know what I'm talking about. So they might create some sort of team, and this team could be totally distributed. It could be anywhere in the world. Now, I'm not saying all companies or entities are going to form this way, but this is what can happen. So you can have this distributed team, and then they can, uh, you know, from this perspective, maybe they're, they're creating some sort of code, right? And this code can be dropped into something like GitHub that other people can see. And because of, if we're talking about code, if we're talking about it like a protocol type company, because of the open source nature, the composability in DeFi and in Ethereum, they can, 
basically be using a lot of other open source code and build something on top of that, whether it's some sort of uh, derivatives protocol, whether it's a, a DAP, a decentralized application, uh, you know, some sort of aggregator, an exchange, something like that. They can, they can work together and build that. They don't have to be anywhere close to each other. They literally don't have to know each other's names. They could be anonymous people, but build this code. And then they can take this, this particular code to, uh, for instance, to testnet, which is where they get to test it out with fake uh, cryptocurrency, which many people would say that's redundant, but fake cryptocurrency, and then go from there to possibly get it audited. So you get the, the code audited. You potentially launch this if, if it's a, some sort of protocol, and you can launch it onto mainnet. And at that point, you can the, the, this team can potentially do some sort of, uh, if, if it's a protocol that requires liquidity, then you can do liquidity mining, right? Which says, look, we, th this might be some exchange or this might be an automated market maker or something like that. Some sort of company, and, and I know I'm saying a lot of words and if you're watching this and you don't understand this, you probably don't understand what I'm saying. But basically what it means is, let's say they create some sort of crypto uh, exchange, a decentralized exchange. Well, in order to have an exchange, you have to have, in this case, different tokens. You have to have different things to exchange. You have to have uh, something like uh, ETH on one side, or you know, the, the token for Ethereum on one side, and we'll call it USDC or US dollar coin on the other side. So in order to have this exchange go live, you have to have enough of each of these that if I come in with my ETH and want to buy USDC, I have to be able to buy it. Well, in order to do that, these, these two folks, these Adam and Ron, who are these distributed programmers, they don't have millions of dollars worth of ETH and USDC to put in there, so they can do what's called liquidity mining, and they can tell people, look, if you come in and, and you dump in your ETH and you dump in your USDC into this pool so that others can exchange it, and we can use our, our protocol that we built, our, our exchange that we built, our code, we'll pay you something. So you have this liquidity mining that says, Anyone who comes in here for a while will pay you, you you'll get you know, 10% or something, 10, 20% uh, on whatever uh, of the fees that we collect uh, based on everyone exchanging, based on everyone you know, providing to this exchange. So this, this can happen, this has happened. They, they need people to come in and be liquidity providers. Now, what happens later is, let's say this protocol is great. Let's say it's a great project, the fees are low, or it does things differently, or it does things really quickly, or it provides some sort of liquidity that we didn't have before, a derivative we didn't have before, and millions of people start using it, and they're just exchanging you know, hundreds of millions of dollars for quite a while, and maybe they find some bugs, and they fix the bugs, or they make it better, and they launch version two. Okay. Now this can all happen in a series of weeks or months. It can happen really rapidly, again, because of the open source and composable nature of DeFi. Now what happens, and this has happened over and over again, is they've had a lot of people that have provided liquidity. They've had a lot of other people that have connected their wallets and started using this protocol. They're using this exchange. Then this distributed team says, you know what? We just went and raised $3 million, $5 million, $10 million, whatever it might be, uh, and we've raised it in different tokens. In, in theory, we've raised it in different DeFi or crypto tokens that we've put into our treasury. And so what we did as this team is we minted our own token. We created our own token that we can use for governance. Maybe the token is what we're gonna use now and this 10% fee is gonna go to our token. So we create the XYZ token and anyone who, who has that token gets governance and they get a percentage of the fee. By the way, all you people that provided liquidity, all you people that came in and used our product, we're going to give you some of these tokens because you actually helped us grow to where we are now. So imagine this. Imagine uh, years and years ago if you know Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak built up Apple uh, and was able to completely uh, boost, get other people to contribute materials and build computers. And then everyone who built and helped contribute materials and time, um, and then everyone who went and bought Apple computers early on got shares of Apple stock by virtue of, of the fact that they did that. That's what it would be like. So this is what we're seeing is these companies are being created. And now this distributed team of a couple people has a Discord group for instance, so they have a whole community built 
uh, that, that, that they built, the people that are helping. They're either providing code or they're providing feedback, or there might be someone managing that Discord community, and that person has a role. And look, they can pay them in tokens now, right? They can pay them in XYZ tokens for, do, for providing education or uh, helping out with the community or helping you know, on Twitter or helping with social media or something or finding out what people want or helping with collaborations with other protocols they can pay them in these tokens now. So now you've had two people that met online, didn't, don't really know each other, contributed to code together. Within a few months, they could potentially have this you know, actually working on mainnet, audited and everything. They can then launch a token, ra raise money, launch a token, and all these people that helped the project get rewarded by having helped the project or get rewarded by having used the project and they get rewarded and the, and the way that this company can find out that I used it is I just connect my wallet and they of course have a record because it's in, in immutable blockchain they have a record of everyone every wallet that's ever connected and use this code that they wrote so they can see that I actually use this code and they can get me a certain amount of tokens I just connect I claim my tokens and bam they're in my wallet and the cool part is because of decentralized exchanges, because of things like you know Uniswap and Balancer and Sushi and such, these XYZ tokens can be liquid right away. So this team that minted these XYZ tokens as governance and value accrual tokens can now provide liquidity onto a decentralized exchange like a Uniswap or, or a, a Sushi Swap or a a balancer or something like that, they can provide that liquidity. And now if I've gotten a couple hundred of those tokens by virtue of having been a user or having been a, a liquidity provider, and you know, those tokens now have a value, I can go uh, you know, exchange those. I can go take those and you know, I get a couple hundred tokens and they're worth five bucks each. I've, I've gotten a thousand dollars for doing something I was doing anyway, but I've gotten rewarded for being a user. This is how companies are going to go in the future. This is the way some companies are going to create it. They're not going to have to go through the process of let's come up with a business plan and let's go form an entity and have a business model and go raise money and go try to sell a product or a service and find product market fit. They can, they can get product market fit through actual use cases, through actually using it, through releasing the code and seeing how people using and iterate through that, it doesn't cost them a whole lot to do it. And then they can reward all the people that help them along the way later. So that is one way we see companies are going to get created. Another way we see companies are going to start up, of course, is, is just a straight, you know, a DAO, right? People will get together, and we've talked about DAOs in the past, people will just get together uh, on a, a Discord group, people that might be just interested in a common subject, you know, a common theme, common investment, whatever it is. So you're going to have people get together, uh, again, Discord, Telegram, uh, Colony, whatever it might be, and they're going to they're going to start discussing something, and maybe they throw some money together and go, oh, we want to invest in something. We want to in invest in DeFi protocols. We want to invest in NFTs. We want to invest in real estate tokens. Whatever it might be. And this, this loose organization is going to start to form some uh, voting rules. They're going to start to, to form some alliances. They're going to start to form working groups and all these things. And you're going to have these organizations that are just uh, created organically. And eventually this DAO might go, look, we need some way to govern ourselves. We need some way to make sure that only the people in here are able to vote on things, but we also need some sort of incentive structure because we've grown enough that we need people to help. We need someone to help run our community. We need someone to help run the Discord. We need someone to help watch people come in the, the door of the Discord and make sure they're okay. We need someone to connect uh, our Discord and Telegram with our website and with Twitter and everything else. We have to give them some incentive, so they'll also create a token. And they will, you know, offer it up as incentive. They will offer it up uh, for for incentives for helping. They will offer it up to those that are already members of the DAO. They will offer it up for for those that create, you know, contributed money, contributed funds. And again, the nice thing is this token will Im immediately have liquidity on some sort of DEX, uh, you know, decentralized exchange or automated market maker. So those that are part of the community that they can immediately see that value. So as this value goes up by virtue of the fact that people organically came together and wanted to use it, eventually that will trickle down into a token and into people being able to say, look, I work for this 
for this DAO, but this DAO isn't a necessarily always a company. It didn't start that way. Now, they will eventually have to have some sort of legal structure, right? Because you still have to have taxes and, and uh, investments and stuff like that. But it doesn't necessarily start that way. It doesn't necessarily have people coming together and go, we're going to create a DAO for this purpose. It just might be people talking and they pool some money together and they buy a few things. And then they go, we have to govern it. We have to have a structure for this. And they start to, to do it that way. It'll be more organic. And what we'll see from that is tokens get created. And now that I can go sell these tokens where I contribute and I get this incentive, I can go sell them on an exchange. That means someone else can buy them. And by buying them, maybe they get to contribute. They get to vote on the DAO. They get, to, they get certain benefits from having that as well. So this is what we see. This is where we see companies are going to go. Now, remember these DAOs, and a DAO can, can be strung, uh, sprung up organically, or some of those, as we say, projects or protocols or whatever, they probably have a DAO as well. The interesting part is seeing what DAO treasuries are going to do, and that's where things are getting really interesting because these DAOs have tokens involved, and this now is the treasury. And a lot of times the treasury is heavily invested in whatever the DAO token or the protocol of the project token is. And so now it's going to be interesting because these, these folks that got together, not only are they trying to manage their own protocol and they're trying to manage the, the code or manage whatever these investments are, but now they also have to manage their treasury. They have to manage the tokens that are sitting in their wallets and, and the value in them and make sure that they're not um, overextended on one particular token. They're not diversified enough. Make sure they don't, they, they're not using too much leverage, all of those things. It's going to get really interesting to see how DAOs and how these projects, protocols are managed because they're not like a hierarchical company the way we think of them. They're going to be, some of them are going to be created more organically. Some of them are just going to spring up. They're going to grow in different ways. They're going to have value for different reasons. They're going to accrue value to their tokens in different ways. And it's just getting really interesting to see how all these projects, DAOs, organizations are, are starting to flourish and starting to show and create real value for people and then to see where that's going to go in the future and how we're going to have this merging of the way we've always done things with entities and businesses and raising money versus the way they're going with DAOs and, and protocols and projects. So we just want to talk about where we think the companies of the future are going to go uh, and give you some interesting uh, information, just some interesting food for thought. So we hope you enjoy this. We hope you'll subscribe. Hope you'll check us out on Twitter at Interaxis8, and we'll see you in the next video.